Hey guys, my name is Constance from CosmopolitanCornbread.com. With everything that has been going on in the world, there are a lot of people who are looking for ways to get a little bit closer to their food chain. Um, they want to be able to grow food, maybe for the first time in their lives. And I, for one, I'm thrilled to see people taking an interest in that. I wish it was under better circumstances. But if you are just wanting to get information about growing a garden for the first time and you are brand new to my channel, like I said, my name is Constance and my husband and I were an active duty army family for 25 years. We lived all over the place. And there were many times over the years where I started a little garden and I didn't need a lot of space to do that. Um, if you are just wanting to have a little bit of something extra that you can grow and enjoy in your own backyard, you don't need a lot of space to do that. I have grown little mini gardens on a balcony in Germany in flower boxes. I have grown potatoes in Rubbermaid totes. I've grown corn in self-watering flower pots. If you are wanting to garden, even if it's just a little bit, you can always find a way to do a little bit of something. Starting seeds is not difficult to do. It's very easy, but a lot of people seem to be a little bit intimidated by it. Uh, one of the things that many people think they need is a greenhouse. I would love to have a greenhouse. I plan on building a greenhouse uh, later this year. I had hoped to get it last year, but I ended up doing a lot of traveling in the fall last year, and so I wasn't able to get to it. So it is high on the priority list for this year. However, I don't have one yet. That has not stopped me from being able to start seeds. There are a number of things that I like to start early and do very well if you transplant. Things like tomatoes, peppers of all different varieties. Now if you are wondering when is a great time to start a garden, when you should start seeds or anything like that, there are a number of websites out there where you can just put in your zip code and it will tell you what garden zone you live in. The garden zone is basically your climate and there are many different zones in the United States. But if you put in your zip code, it'll tell you exactly what your garden zone is and you can get a calendar with all of the dates of when you should start seeds if you're starting them indoors when you should look at planting things outside, whether you are transplanting or if you are direct sowing, that's where you put the seeds straight into the ground. And one of the websites, the website that I use the most is garden.org. Uh, it's just one that I came across years ago and that is the one that I use the most. Like I said, there's many different websites out there. Um, that do that. There's even a little slide card you can get for about five dollars. Um, it's Clyde's Garden Calendar, I think is what it's called. Um, very inexpensive. You just look up what your last freeze date is for where you live and then you use this little slide card to show you exactly when you should do everything. Um, but let me get back to the starting seeds. If you are wanting to start seeds and you don't have a greenhouse, that's okay. Not only do I not have a greenhouse, I also do not have a basement. I don't have a garage. I don't have any sort of extra storage space here on our homestead yet uh, where I can start the seeds. And so I get a little bit creative. Now, things like peppers don't like to germinate. The seeds don't like to begin growing unless the soil is nice and warm. So I use a heat mat. It's sort of like a heating pad like you would have for belly aches or back aches, except it is plastic coated and it's made specifically for uh, seed trays where you would start your seeds and it warms the soil to help those germinate and I will use those just for the peppers to help get them going and then once they germinate I will just take that and put it away because don't need it anymore that's just to get the seeds going but as far as where do I grow everything well 
let me show you. Right here in my bedroom, this wall, this window is south facing, which means it gets the most sun as far as any other place in my house. But even though it is a south facing window, it's not enough light. When you have little baby plants, seedlings starting to grow, they are going to grow towards that light and the light coming through that window isn't enough. And what's going to happen is those seedlings will start reaching towards the window and they will get long and spindly and what's called leggy and they will be a very weak plant. So I have uh, lighting that I use and there's, there's all different kinds of lighting out there. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You can use shop lights. Um, all different types of lights. Um, I have two different types here. This grow light right here is made by um, Fairy Morse and it's of course specifically made for um, ceiling trays. I like these. They, they run about $39, $40 a piece. I have several of them. They work great because they are the exact length of one of these seed trays. The downside to these is the bulb gets very warm. So as your plants grow, if they get tall enough to touch that bulb, it's going to scorch it. So I do have quite a few of these. I also have up here, you'll notice some funny uh, colors happening. These are LED grow lights. And I've used both versions for a couple of years now. What I like about the LED lights, first of all, they didn't cost as much as these grow lights down here. But the other great thing is that they are cool. They, they just have the slightest warmth to them. They're not going to scorch your plants. So if I was to start all over again, I would probably start with all LED lights just because I like the fact that I don't have to worry about them scorching my plants. The shelving unit that I have here is just a basic, I think I paid about $20 for this at Home Depot. It's just, it's just garage or storage shelving. It's plastic. It's easy to put together. I will set this up here in the window and then when growing season is finished, I will just take it apart and put it away and store it until next year. But uh, hopefully next year I won't need it because I'll have my greenhouse. So back to the lighting, you'll notice that these pots right here that I have, which are all of my pepper plants, I have the light very, very close to them. And that goes back to the seedlings needing a lot of light. The closer you put the light to that little bitty seedling, the better that seedling is going to develop. If the light is too far away from it, the ceilings will get tall, they will get leggy, and they will be weak. And so the closer you put it to begin with, the better. And over time, as the pepper plants get taller and taller, I will raise up this light to give them more space. And uh, that's just the way we do it. Same thing goes with my tomato plants down here. When I first start them, these are the boxes that the uh, grow lights come in. I hang on to these because I will store all of my lights in them in the off season. But they come in pretty handy because when the tomato plants are itty bitty little seedlings, I will put these boxes under the seed trays to raise them up and get them right up by that light. And now that these tomato plants are getting much, much taller, I have the grow lights sitting on top of the boxes to raise the lights to give the tomato plants more room. But these tomato plants are outgrowing this location, so they are going to move to a new place. And the reason I'm showing you all of this is because I don't want you to think that you have to have a whole bunch of fancy equipment or a greenhouse or anything uh, crazy to start seeds. I've got over a hundred tomato plants here in all different varieties, but if you're just wanting to get started with, you know, your first garden and a few tomato plants and a few peppers or whatever, you don't need this much space, just set a table in front of your window or in a closet or in your garage, wherever you've got a space, as long as you've got some grow lights uh, and you can start them anywhere. You don't need a fancy setup. And the other thing you don't need is a greenhouse. I've put together what I call a five minute cold frame, which is essentially a simple 
small version of a greenhouse and I did this last year as my plants were in the same situation they were outgrowing this space and it worked beautifully it gave them more room it allowed the plants to have space to grow up it gave them sunlight all the sunlight they needed no more lights needed and it was really cheap to do let me show you all right so this cold frame is something that I did last year and it worked so so well that I knew if I wasn't gonna have time to build a greenhouse this past year that this is how I would go about transitioning all of my plants from being inside the house to being outdoors um, just like I did last year so to put this together you just need a couple basic things first of all you need some straw bales and I have quite a few straw bales because I'm gonna make this cold frame uh, rather large so this one is going to be three bales long and then there'll be a bale on either end. So altogether, uh, eight bales of straw. Now because this straw is going to be exposed to the elements, of course I won't use this for bedding or anything like that, but this straw is not being wasted because what will happen is I will use all of these straw bales to mulch my garden once it's time to plant everything and mulching your garden will help your soil hold moisture, help it, it be more regulated, not dry out as quickly. It will help with weed control and it's just a great thing to do for your garden. I would never have a garden and not mulch it. Now I don't want the grass to grow up all around my plants. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna lay something down. Now you don't have to use anything fancy. I do have a roll of uh, weed blocker sheeting stuff and I'm gonna use that, but you can use cardboard, layers of newspaper, plastic sheeting, a tarp, whatever you happen to have. You just want to make it so that the grass doesn't grow up and smother your plants. All right, so the straw creates the walls of the cold frame. It also insulates the inside. And so as the temperature changes outside, the straw will help insulate your plants and keep the temperature inside more stable. When it gets cold at night, it won't be so cold in there. But you got to finish this off by putting something clear across the top. Now last year I had a whole bunch of really old windows and I laid those across the cold frame. However, they were wood framed, the wood was really, really old and it was kind of falling apart. And by the time we got done with the season of using these, they were just disintegrating. But you can really use anything that is sturdy and clear. You can use windows, you could use a storm door if it's glass, um, you can use all sorts of different things. What I'm going to do this year is I picked up a couple sheets of the corrugated uh, clear, I don't know, I guess it's fiberglass or whatever it is. Basically, it's the corrugated sheeting that you would use for a greenhouse. And because we plan on building a greenhouse this year, I figured that's not going to be wasted. I'll just hang on to those and those will simply be the first two sheets that go on the greenhouse. Now the plastic has a little bit of flexibility in there and because this is such a long stretch, I don't want it to sag in the center. So I just have a piece of scrap wood that I'm just gonna lay across the straw bales to help support it. Now this corrugated plastic sheeting is extremely lightweight, 
last year we used those windows they were glass they were heavy and so we didn't have to worry about them going anywhere a strong wind would easily just blow this away I'm just going to lay a couple of bricks to weigh them down so that is all that you need to set up a very simple cold frame sort of greenhouse. You don't have to have an actual full-size greenhouse to grow food. You can do something as simple as this and it took about five minutes. Five minutes to put together uh, and all of these things are items that will be reused for other things so none of this will go to waste and you can easily put this together with scrap materials that you may have laying around your property or you find on the curb on trash day i'm just saying last year when we did this we had several late freezes and all of my tomato plants were perfectly fine inside the cold frame they thrived out here so you just want to make sure that you put this someplace where it gets lots of sunlight so now that I have my cold frame set up, I'm going to start moving in the tomato plant. So I hope you find that helpful. I just want people to feel empowered and know that you don't have to have a fancy setup you don't have to have a greenhouse. You don't have to have any of these things to be able to grow some of your own food. You can have a shop light and a table. And you could have some straw bales and some old windows. And that's all that you need to really get started. Now on my blog and on my channel, cosmopolitancornbread.com, I have other uh, videos and articles that might be helpful. I have an article all about growing tomatoes with lots of tips on uh, keeping your plants healthy and how to deal with pests and all of that. I have an article or a video all about organic pesticides, what things are safe to use in your garden, what you should use them for. I have recipes for homemade bug sprays. There's all sorts of things that you might find helpful, including how to mix up your own seed starter soil or how to use a soil blocking tool so you don't have to buy all of those little pots and starter kits from the store. All you need is the tool and some dirt and that's all you need and the trays that i had those plants in i use over and over and over again every year to start my seeds in so i will link the playlist of those videos down below this video as well as a link to some of the articles on cosmopolitancornbread.com that uh, might help you out if you have any questions leave them in the comments down below and i will be sure to answer them as best i can I do about three videos a week on homesteading, home cooking, and back to basics. And on my website, cosmopolitancornbread.com, there are hundreds of recipes and articles. So thanks for stopping by today. My name is Constance, and I will talk to y'all next time.